Hey, welcome to this week's edition of Snowmobiler Television. On this week's show, we're on a mission to tune in more power into our 2019 Yamaha SRX and then hit the trails with it and another sled with 320 horsepower to finally answer the question, is there such a thing as too much horsepower? I don't think so. Stick around, this is gonna be good. TV is brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Altamex belts. Performance driven, performance proven. Ford F-Series Canada's best selling line of trucks for 53 years. Tough, smart, capable. For our mission to increase the power of our stock long-term test SRX, we've come back to Precision EFI to work through three of their four stages of tuning. And that should take our stock SRX's power up from its 200 horsepower to 280. Now that's a 40% hit over stock. It's all about uh, passion and a dream I had uh, since I started uh, in the reflash, I wanted to be, let's say, the, uh, to make a comparison, uh, a McLaren, the eye-in of the uh, snowmobile market. So we try to put all the attention uh, to the small details. So I want the experience for the customers from the order uh, to when you receive the package to when you install it and then he goes, write it. I want a 12 out of 10 note at the end of the day. So going on the two stroke business also, but it's gonna be more on the next year. We're planning of doing uh, the Skidoo 850, the 850 Polaris. We already have products for the 8000 C-Tech 2 uh, Arctic Cat. So definitely the focus will be to do a nice packaging uh, for, the, for the mountain, but it's mainly trail and mountain. Uh, from the clutching, from the exhaust, from the troll response. Uh, I always try to make <clears throat> the perfect ride. The first stage of the power pipeline is a simple ECU reflash that could be done at any one of Precision EFI's dealers. And that gets you 30 horsepower. From there, the stages build on one another all the way up to the stage four kit that gets you 320 horsepower. Stage one for sure is the easy go. It's like you just you bring the sled to a dealer. It's take uh, three to four minutes. You come in, they flash your sled, you're out, you're ready to go. You have 30 horsepower more on a stock sled. So without changing any parts of it, that's our stage one. Stage one is gonna give you better throttle response. That's the, that's the big difference for sure. And the, and the 30 horsepower more on the, on the high RPM also you're going to feel there. But even just the customer take his, his stage one and he's going to notice right away just on trail condition when you get out of the corner or something, you just repress on the gas and you're going to feel right away the difference. After stage one, I went for a quick burn to get a handle on the difference. Now I know the SRX has got a lack of rear grip with the one inch track but I do like how the track balances the handling of the machine, and I was curious to feel what 30 more horsepower would do to that. Stage two is the package where you need to change exhaust uh, to have more flow from, from it, and some weights in the clutch to be able to match the RPM from the power you're adding. Uh, stage two, it's, it's, it's sort of like the middle between or her, her, her little bit bigger package at the 280 and the 230. The stage two, you're gonna have a 250 horsepower. So you're gonna, it's normally more a guy who wants a little bit more than the stage one, but not going too far in the, uh, in the horsepower, if we can say. The SRX and the new power is definitely turning the track harder, and you can feel that pull in the bars at any throttle position, especially rolling in throttle between corners where the SRX would hook up a little better. I wish I had studs, and I'm ready for more stages. Stage three for the SRX is gonna be uh, the continuing of the stage two, which is same exhaust, free flowing exhaust with some weights in the clutch. For sure, you're gonna, we're gonna need to put more weight in the clutch for the stage three, because we're adding another 30 horsepower to bring it to 280. 
on uh, again all the rest of the, the sled needs to be to stay stock we just put an exhaust and some clutch weight and you're ready to go with your 80 horsepower gain hardware between stage two and three is going to be the same it's going to be more only the programming is going to change so you're going to have a little bit more boost between those two stages. the riding feel it's really it's really nice on the stage three honestly because you you just have enough power to get a lot of fun in some some straight with your sled and you you still like you still gonna have a nice feeling in a trail also for trawl response and everything so it's a really nice package for that's our main that's our main one we're selling the most here actually the the, the, the or multi map stage three which should give you access to change all the mapping on the stock cluster. With the stage three kit installed we went on a quick loop of around a hundred kilometers. And even though the power of the Stage 3 kit is easily felt in the seat of the pants, it's the poise of its delivery that's most impressive. It's seamless. It feels like a Yamaha Sidewinder with its familiar and linear power delivery. It just has more of it. I was expecting a bigger hit somewhere in the power band that would produce unpredictable ride characteristics, but there was none of that. The 280 horsepower of this stage is completely rideable. But don't let that fool you into thinking that this improvement isn't doing much. Speed is even more effortless over the stock SRX, and it's spooky how quickly it builds that speed, and even spookier when it comes time to brake for the corners. Stage four is just fuel upgrade system, air box, and map sensor. You're adding over that and headers uh, before the turbo, so the headers before, and uh, you're gonna be able to run the 320 horsepower on pump. So it's crazy to get that power on a real trail sled like you really you have your 320 and you can go to the gas station and run like just a 91 octane and continue your day it's it's really amazing honestly because everybody you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna cross in the trail or something if they want to get that power normally they're running a race fuel or something like in not in that case it's really a hundred percent trail package for the srx we're going to cap this thing off at stage three not because Sebastian isn't willing to install the stage four, it's just at this point, we're pretty much well beyond the traction capable of a one inch track without any traction devices. The SRX is awesome though, and I don't think I'll ever be able to ride another stalker. Coming up next after the break, we hop on Precision EFI's shop sled. Traction is the key to big power, and I'm looking forward to the extra grip that this beast has got. Now the SRX, it was good, but you can definitely feel it was suffering from its one inch track and lack of grip. This sled though, its power and its track package should give me a better idea what 320 horsepower feels like when it hooks up. I drive too The shop sled is a 2018 uh, limited edition. I think it was the 50th uh, anniversary. Uh, we've done pretty much everything that Precision EFI builds. It's on this machine right now. Uh, we started with stage one and we built our way up to stage four. Uh, we found all the weakness on, on the machine and we improve uh, every time we were increasing the horsepower out of it. Uh, so this one makes 320 horsepower on pump gas. Uh, we also race with this machine, uh, so we can switch in the map to the full race mode. Uh, by using the twin port wastegate that we got right now, we can increase to 27 to 30 pounds of boost uh, when it's time to race. Uh, so the only thing we need to do uh, to go to the race is just put a straight pipe muffler and change the clutching and put race fuel in and that's it. What I wanted to do first, I just put trail studs on it. Uh, so what we've done is we put uh, chisels in the middle of the track and ice triggers on the outside so we can have uh, braking because chisels and brakes doesn't go together. Um, so that's my setup when I want to go race. It's more lake racer, this guy. Uh, so when I want to race on the lake, uh, definitely that's my setup there. Uh, it's four, uh, four pins per row, uh, so we try to get as much traction as we can. You might have to excuse me while I have a love-in with this sled and a bromance with Sebastian for creating it, because this Stage 4 kit is awesome. This thing has got drag sled acceleration despite the loose trail conditions we're riding in, but it also feels like a stock Sidewinder with its ride and handling, and it feels perfectly normal riding the trails. At part throttle, you would never know there's 320 horsepower under the hood. 
The only clue there is something going on under there is a quicker throttle response. But as soon as the flipper gets anywhere near the bars, the stage four starts pulling and simply doesn't stop. Sebastian built this system with priority on trails and he succeeded. It's still a regular sidewinder, just with way more power everywhere. However, you do have to ride with a head on your shoulders and a good connection down to your throttle thumb. A stock sidewinder and its paltry 200 horsepower will never feel the same again. I would say it's as smooth as stock. It's very predictable power. Um, it's all about trial response. Uh, we try to make as much as possible a linear power curve. Um, so every time, like let's say now with a stage four, I'm gonna be probably at uh, 90 miles an hour uh, on the stock machine close to wide open throttle, this guy now it's like 50-40% throttle, you can reach like a very good cruising speed. And it's just like when you need the power, you got it. Coming up next after the break, we head to Royal Distributing for some last minute shopping. Snowmobilers like stuff, and before any good snowmobile trip, you will always need more stuff. And the best place to come for snowmobile stuff is Royal Distributing. We're headed out on one of our first rides of the year, and it turns out Logan, our master of logistics and coordination, has a bunch of stuff to pick up. Luckily, Royal Distributing has a store here in Innisfil, Ontario, which is between our offices and our destination, so we're able to get everything he needs for our trip. So, Mike, tell me about how many stores you guys have in Ontario. Okay, so we have the store that we're in here at Jeff in Innisfil. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one in Whitby, yeah. one in Guelph, and one further north in Sudbury. So that's, we have four stores in Ontario. Yeah, that's pretty accessible for people in the snowmobile world anyways. I mean, that's kind of on the way to the trail for a lot of people in Ontario. Yep, obviously Ontario is a huge market with mm -hmm. uh, lots of trails all over the place. So we've tried to position the stores to match up with where a lot of the, the trails and the power sports usage is the highest. So Mike, it looks like you got a lot of like self-serve stuff out on the floor, right? Yep, what we do is we will merchandise the uh, store in two sections. One where we'll have stuff people can come in and look, browse, try stuff on, that kind of stuff. It's not anything model specific. It could mm -hmm. be anything that you're looking for. Yeah, just general accessories. Correct. And then we'll have, if it's a make model year specific item, that's where you would go to the parts desk. Okay. That's counter sales, that's right? That's counter sales, yeah. Okay. So at the parts desk here, you know, we've got uh, a couple of different ways that we serve you, but all the make, model, year specific items are at the back, the oil filters. Yeah, okay, so yeah, if you're looking for an idler wheel for a 1990 Polaris Indy 650, your staff here is gonna help me out with that. Absolutely. Go into the back, grab it, and I'm off yeah. to the cash after that. Bring it out, yeah. As knowledgeable as a lot of our customers are, it's nice to be able to just make sure that that matches the part they need and the best some of the most fun we have is when someone will come in with an idler wheel that's half worn out and say hey can you help me match this and you say what's the make model year where you start from there and it could be a four or five minute transaction just looking at and make sure the bearing matches yeah. the wheel is the right diameter the whole bit that's where the majority of the fun comes cool nice and well laid out too
Royal has been in business since the late 80s and has grown through catalog and telephone sales to include superstores like this that are bigger than most dealerships. But not everyone is lucky enough to have a Royal store located on their way to the trails. And to serve those customers better, Royal has invested in a new website that is much easier to navigate and order from. Yeah, we're really excited. I mean, we've been listening to our customers, uh, as always, always listen to products they want, different things that are coming up. We heard loud and clear from them that we're a little outdated in terms of our current website. So we made a major investment and we have a new state of the art website that's gonna help us continue to ship products all throughout Canada like we have been for the past years, but even get them there quicker and just give customers a much better experience as they shop with us. They're gonna arrive on this new site and they're gonna be able to search for anything they're looking for. So any product category, whether you're searching for snowmobile, ATV, UTV, you can get there quickly. You can search down by brand, you can search by different products, you can even search your ride. So if you're searching for parts for a particular vehicle you have, you can drill that right down to your year make model, find every part that fits that so you know that you have a guaranteed fitment when you do order your part with us. We want to service Canada coast to coast, so when you do make your order we're going to ship it right to your doorstep and we're going to get it there very, very fast. We actually have the best shipping policy in the industry, so as long as your order is over $39, we're going to ship it to you for free. It's not going to necessarily shift off the stores. I mean, you've been in our stores, you've seen them, they're beautiful. Uh, we all love them. It's just going to give people throughout Canada a better means to shop with us. So if you want to come in the store, if that's your thing, that's going to continue to thrive. But if you are unable to make it to our store for whatever reason, now you're going to have an excellent experience online shopping with us as well. Uh, that coupled with the fact we've recently put in a 90,000 square foot distribution center, it's going to allow us ser to service every customer coast to coast in the best possible fashion in this industry. Winter's here, and as always, I'm not quite ready for it. Cause summer's gone, and as always, it went by steady but quick. But I know time is going faster. I always want what I can have. It tastes just a disaster for everything to crash. Well, these stores are pretty well laid out. I mean, you've got Lots of merchandise for people to come in and get their teeth on, right? Oh, yeah. We try and obviously make it a one-stop shop for everybody. So depending on the time of year, we will expand or contract our, our line that we carry. Right now, this mm -hmm. time of year obviously is pretty fully blown towards snowmobile. We want to be, have a, a good customer service experience from our knowledgeable staff. Mm -hmm. We have several areas of the store that... Uh, are laid out sort of in quadrants where depending on what you're looking for you can go directly there yeah if it's uh snowmobiles or helmets, helmets. like we're in right now yeah uh, we'll it's have all people kind of who have been trained on fitting helmets what kind of helmet they're looking for all that stuff yeah to be able to figure out the best helmet for their needs and match the budget that they're looking for at the same time yeah having the staff that's knowledgeable is really key right yeah so what we do too is you know, if we have probably 35 staff in this store, 34 of them will participate in power sports of some kind. Jeff, not a snowmobile. Royal Distributing has started from humble beginnings and through hard work and people dedicated to the power sports industry has become what you see today. John Mockery literally started Royal Distributing in a barn and has seen many changes to his business as it's grown over the years. Uh, Royal Distributing started in 1990. We had uh, spent 15 years uh, selling uh, three OEM brands of uh, motorcycles and Yamaha snowmobiles. And uh, we were into accessories pretty heavy with the, with the actual machines, motorcycles, ATVs. and. We saw that was an opportunity for better margins and units, and uh, and uh, I decided that uh, I'd give up on the uh, sale of the actual units and go into mail order. I saw what Dennis Kirk was starting to do in the States and uh, said, why not try it in Canada? And, uh, and in 1990, we started with Paul Mezier as a partner and I uh, uh, started working out of my farm, which was a dairy barn, renovated at the time for my other business, Royal City Cycle, where we used it for warehousing, and it was an easy transition, and there was just two of us saying we're going to have a hobby, 
and uh, the hobby grew a bit. You know, I, I had a lot of employees at the time for my other business, and I felt that if Paul and I could just have this as a hobby, we'd have a, a great life and, and a simple life. But uh, since then, it has changed to four retail stores, 200 and some people, and and uh, uh, yeah, it's beyond our dreams. You know, the success we uh, we got in it at the right time, and and. Uh, and the sales exploded over the first 10 years and, and uh, it was incredible actually. Uh, you know, uh, to write a story that it was going to go that way, you couldn't even think about it. So, A lot of long-term people that uh, have helped me get here. Uh, without, it, without these employees and, and, and external people that helped us through the years, um, you know, we, we couldn't have got here and uh, you know, this industry's got a lot of good people in it. Every writer that comes in has a different story and has experience, and uh, or good or bad, it's, uh, it's, it's always uh, pretty neat, some of the stuff you uh, see in here and, uh, and how people are enjoying their products. So. I got what I want. See you in the truck. That's a you problem. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And on this show, we've been playing with a lot of it. But anytime one of these monster sleds have been let loose, we've been on a private test track. Now, it doesn't matter if you got 20 or 320 horsepower, snowmobiles have to be ridden with respect, not only to the trail system, but also to the landowners and the other users out there on the systems that we enjoy. Until next week, keep it on your side, and we'll see you on STV. STV has been brought to you by CKX. Wear your passion. On Snow Magazine, for snowmobilers, from snowmobilers.